Welcome back to Fast Monty's Garage. Today we get to install a CDI box from Fitech, and I can't wait. If you're brand new here, welcome. Uh, if you're not utilizing timing control in your uh, fuel injection throttle body, if you have an old school muscle car you converted to fuel injection, you're missing out. So the last two episodes we did, I converted my HEI distributor. I take that back. We yanked my HEI distributor for an MSD Pro billet, locked out the mechanical advance because you have to do that to take advantage of time and control in your fuel injection system. I don't care what company you use. Now, the interesting thing about Phytech is that they're the only ones you don't need a CDI box to get time and control to work. And ever since I put it in and installed it, my idle's better, my throttle response is faster, and I'm definitely more efficient at cruising because I didn't have a vacuum advance on my original distributor. So that was a big deal to me. So go check out those videos. But today we need to talk about how do we improve our efficiency, especially if you have high compression or boosted applications, or you're just getting more air and fuel into your modified engine, bigger heads, more airflow, et cetera. You want to take advantage of burning all that fuel in the cylinder because the limitation of our inductive coils is they cannot produce as much energy at high RPM, whereas a capacitive discharge ignition has a capacitor, so it was able to store more energy, throw more energy at the spark plug, keep that energy level the same throughout the RPM range, and at lower RPMs do multiple fires. Yeah, there's a lot going on, right? So if you have a bigger flame in your cylinder, you're more efficient at burning that um, combination of fuel and air, you're getting more efficiency. More efficiency means more power. That's why we do this, right? <laughs> and the more power, the more fun. So today, we're going to install this, I don't know where yet, on the firewall, inside the cabin, I don't know. But we're also going to do a before test. I have an HEI tester that we're going to use to give a visual of how much energy is being discharged from the current coil. We're going to install this and then we'll do an after test with the same tester and show you guys there is more power there. So, yep, another fun one. And if you're brand new to the channel, welcome. Subscribe if you haven't. And if I've ever helped you out, Consider getting a hat, get a shirt, whatever. Links are below. Let's go hit the workbench. I want to show you this HEI tester. Here's the HEI tester I was telling you about. It basically mimics a spark plug. So it's very handy for testing your spark plug wires. You just take this off your spark. I'm oh, sorry. Take the boot off your spark plug, put it on here, ground it out, and you can test for spark. It's great for troubleshooting. Today, we're going to test the coil. So I'm basically going to remove this from my coil in the car put it on here, ground it out, crank the engine, and we should see spark in here, and that will give us a great benchmark as to what we're starting with. After we install the CDI box, we'll do the same test, and we, can, we should be able to see a far different result. So let's go set it up. Fire in the hole. So you probably saw the spark dancing in there, so hopefully, uh after we get this all wired up, we'll see much more, or actually several sparks dancing at the same time. I guess we'll find out, right? Next step, let's go look at the box, the wiring harness, and see where to mount that thing. Here's the most challenging part of any build or any process or any adding anything new to your car is where the hell I put this thing? Uh, so let's talk about that. The harness that comes with it is about five feet long. It's touching the ground. I'm 5'9", 5'10", whatever, so five feet long. So worst case scenario, yes, you can cut all these wires and re-terminate. So knowing that, there's also uh, some vibration dampeners that are included. I highly recommend them. I have them reverse mounted right now because I'm probably going to be using some nut rivets when I put this on wherever I put it on. Now, the good thing about using uh, standoffs like this is you can put it on a contoured surface. It doesn't have to be a perfectly flat surface, right? So that helps. So now I just have to figure out where the hell to put it. Firewall, uh, wheel well, inside the car. Oh, here we go. And to give you guys some ideas, here's a possible place. Maybe even here, or reverse it, and run the wires behind the firewall. Maybe even back here, obviously you have to splice it. 
Um, if you have a battery, good thing to keep in mind is the wire harness and what you have to connect to. So why don't we go talk about the actual wiring options and then I'll find a mounting place. Right in your instructions, you have several different options to pick from. Thank God there's diagrams. We have magnetic two wire distributor. We have a two wire pickup distributor with a throttle body. We have a timing control, which we're going to get to. We have an HEI distributor, which I used to have. And this is a seven pin module HEI distributor. Ford, GM dual coil points distributor which you can use and for Duro Spark. So going back this is specifically what I need. So this is time control through the throttle body and we have to rely we have to change my coil connections. We have to go to the battery. My battery's in the trunk. I'll show you where I have a, a power boss on the firewall. Uh, 12 volt switched. Our mag pick pickup is not used because we get to use the throttle body. Did that last episode. And more importantly, the white to black wire on the mating harness, which is this guy right here that should be wired in your car. Mine's already wired in, but remember I had to take this one out because I cut the black wire because I didn't need it for my original throttle body. Now I have port injection and timing control. Different story. So uh, I got to do some noodling, but need to plan on the battery connections for sure. That would probably determine where to put your box. All right, if you guys saw the last video, I told you it was, looked janky, but uh, let's see how it looks when I'm done. All right, all wired in. Check how clean that is. It's not mounted there. It's not mounted over there. It's actually inside the cabin. I'll show you guys in a second. But this is the positive terminal I use. This is the bus I installed um, during that alternator swap out I had to do a few episodes ago. Um, the ground is down here. I ground a spot on the on the body and put the ground on there. But all the wiring is hidden, which is awesome. This is the new wiring from the CDI box. Uh, so I will show you where it is right now. There it is. Mounted under my front. Well, it's not mounted yet, but it's under my front seat. So I will mount it in a, in a couple seconds here, but I have to take the car out of the garage. I can only do it in the driveway because I can't get the front seat out. So that's why it's still loose, but the wires run underneath the carpet there. So I'll show you guys underneath the carpet um, when I get the seat out, just to give you guys an idea. But the next test here is when we turn this on, when we key on, there's supposed to be a red light somewhere. So um, let, let's give that a shot. Okay, the light did turn on, so I pulled it out. <laughs> it's, the light is right here on the right side of the connector, so let's try this again. There it is. There's the light. So that is awesome. Now let's go check the spark plug test that we started with. All right, fire in the hole. See what happens. That was way better. Oh my gosh. So I'm going to go ahead and change coil back to normal and let's fire this thing up. All right, here we go. This always stresses me out. I don't care what modification I make. It always, uh, gets me nervous because I want it to work the first time. But the most important thing is, assuming it does start, I want to make sure the tack's working because of the new tack wiring. But other than that, cross everything you have two of. It's weird. Took three times. I'll have to look into that. So I found the root cause of that rough start. Check this out. See the wires? They were underneath the clamp. Oh my God, how stupid. So be careful when you put your distributor in, make sure your wires are out of the way. Oh my God, driving me nuts. All right, time to take the seat out. I hate this process because it's heavy it's awkward. I don't want to scratch anything. So anyway, I had already pre-marked with masking tape around the CDI box exactly where I want it because it's not bolted down. It's going to move when I take the seat out. I can almost guarantee it. So uh, here we go. Oh, 
Whew, I hate doing that. Let's go take a look at what's going on here. Ah, not too bad, didn't move very much. That's where I want to put it. And I'm gonna go ahead and show you guys, you have to take this um, molding off and then we can peel this carpet back because most of you have two piece carpet. There's a front half and a rear half. So you can actually take this up so we can look at the wire harness, which comes underneath here somewhere because we have to be mindful of that. All right, I got the molding off. You take this clip off to get the plug on, I mean off, and that's how I did it. So I ran it through this hole. So underneath, you can see all my dynamat, where I ran the cable, it actually runs along up in front of my kick panel because there's a speaker there. I didn't want any magnetic interference. And then up through uh, the magic cutaway in my firewall. So <clears throat> underneath here is exactly what I talked about. This is the wire harness to the fuse panel. It goes all the way to the rear of the car. And it looks like I, it's right underneath, which is pretty good if you ask me now i gotta figure out how to transfer the holes because i want i think i want to put some thread certs in here um yeah that's what i want to do so i just took my center punch and i went through each hole because of the dynamat it should leave a nice little dimple in there and there it is so now i can find all all the dimples and make a decision on what to put in to hold everything all right, Crazy Mike's at it again. So I'm gonna use what's called a nut rivet. So this is a nut, so I'll drill a hole in the floor. And one of you guys gave me a tip last time I did this is to put some JB weld on here. It uh, solidifies that contact on the sheet metal, also provides a good uh, waterproof layer. And go ahead and use our vibration dampeners that came with the kit. And that will give us enough room above the current wire harness so we're not wibbly wobbly on there or pinching it too much. So I'm going to get to work. So we're going to put these holes in and then we'll put holes in the carpet. I do not recommend drilling through carpet because you can snag it and then create a run through the whole carpet. And uh, that doesn't look too good. <laughs> so let's go ahead and get these holes in and I'll show you how it works. All right, there we go. We're all set. I just need to put our carpet back down. And like I said earlier, do not drill through carpet. I'm going to start with a punch. I'm going to find the hole, the furthest one out, because we're going to work this way towards the free end of the carpet. Use, um, like I use a center punch, then I'm going to use a slightly bigger Phillips head screwdriver, enlarge the hole. I've also seen the trick where you can use a, a used soldering iron. Put that hop tip in there and that cauterizes the carpet so to speak i use that on bigger holes but this is a tiny hole so i'm gonna start hunting for them and obviously i also cut the carpet right here so that gives us um, a more stable platform you're not gonna see it no one's gonna know except you guys there we go perfect i'll just bolt it bolt it right on plug it in get that chair back installed there we go team super rigid oh man i love it be sure to get that black that gray plastic clip put back in there because you can't take the harness off without that clip out so that's kind of a safety and i'm going to do my best to put the chair back on without damaging these wires here we go but after that it's time for a test drive there she is boys and girls i love it so might give you guys some ideas, but let's go hit the road. Okay, another cold start test. Remember we had difficulty earlier because of that stupid wiring mishap. <laughs> so um, cold start, I'm dead cold. It's the next day and road test. I gotta go to the gas station. So here we go. Wait for that little squirt. Let's go. Other than that, it's super smooth. So I'm going to take it up to a couple gears here and see what happens. But so far, no misfiring, which is the whole point, right? And man, this is awesome. Can't wait to go on the quarantine cruise in a couple days. That'll be a nice longevity test because it's 100 miles up, 100 miles back. And man, it's so much fun. Oh 
yeah, feels so good. And I know it's subjective, but it does feel smoother. And keep in mind, this is a, we're, we're combining not only timing control that we did in the last two episodes, we added the CVI box, we're adding efficiency, we're adding spark. Here's the picture. Left is before, right is after. There's clearly more spark there, which means more efficiency and more power. So I alluded to the next video is going to be the quarantine cruise. I, I'm going there in a couple days. It's 100 miles up. 100 miles back. It's going to be a great test of the system. I get to test to see if the fuel efficiency improves because we're, we changed everything. Timing control and a CDI box. So naturally fuel efficiency better improve. And I know the gauge. Full tank. I, get a half, I have a half tank when I get there. So we'll see what the gauge says. Now, um, drivability obviously is another thing, but that's all subjective. I know that. But most importantly, check your wiring. Because, uh, yeah, me putting the wires underneath the distributor clamp, not recommended. <laughs> so if you haven't subscribed, do so. We've got a ton more ideas coming out, and uh, especially the quarantine cruises, because it'll give you a ton of ideas for your build. But until next time, building fast, driving faster. See ya.